from New Orleans and Vegas. We're here for the title matches of the Mojave Doubles tournaments. Both divisions at once here. We're doing Baker format, so the teammates are going to alternate frames. That's one bowler of the top seed handicap duo of Nathan Hannison and Austin Signoretti. They are taking on the team of Shelby Dempsey and Marguerite Evans. That's Shelby on screen. Shelby and Marguerite making their third title match in doubles this season. They made the SoCal title match, they made the Arizona title match, and here they are in the Mojave title match. That's amazing in handicap on three wildly different lane conditions too. But they were able to perform so well throughout all three tournaments. What happened in those title matches? We're not going to talk about that. So we're going to see what happens in this one. Nice opening shot for Shelby, Riley's younger sister. The handicap is zero. What's the handicap? There ain't none. That's a... Uh, Show that's well, what's that comment? I can't believe it. Oh well, not important. So, yeah, whoever wins that game, scratch a win. And in the scratch division, Kyle King and Zach Atori have absolutely lapped the field today, going plus 325 on a day where almost nobody else was even plus. But they still got to win this title game to walk away with the victory. And that breaks up a split there in his first frame. We'll see how each of these go about their corner pins. That's the ultimate 710, Travis, with a 7 on the left and a 10 on the right. Well, a whiff on the 10 there. Spares were important today, Jeff. Spares were mandatory today because strikes were few and far between. They bowled on the WTBA uh, the Tokyo pattern, and they were brutal. Cut was minus 190 in handicap and minus 160-something in scratch. Uh, divided by two, that's minus 80. So roughly a 180 average was good enough to make the cut in scratch day. And on the level of talent that we had in that division today, that's uh, very, very low. Probably the toughest regular season tournament of the year because in the scratch division, cause there's so much talent in there. A lot of visiting college teams and a lot of uh, the high-end adult bowlers teaming up with their partners here. Speaking of, Chase Nado, one of the better juniors right out of Vegas, teamed up with David Haynes, one of the best bowlers, period, in Vegas. And Chase got a washout to deal with here in frame one. Two years ago, Chase was about up to my hips, and I think he's officially taller than me now. I don't know what happened there. Ms. Evans, the familiar form now, off to the right, and that's what happens no matter what your rev rate, no matter what ball you threw, if you hit right of 10, that's the pin, amount of pinfall you were going to get today. Plays in right down. No. And Chase with a extreme rev rate, even that ball barely even moved going for the washout, so he's open in the first. Two out of four marks for the four teams there, and that might be the pace you see the rest of the day here. Much better shot at the spare. And she gets them all. Nice job, Dominic. Spare for her team. Austin Signoretti up on the right hand lane. One JBT title to his credit. Oh, real nice shot there. I mean, the no thumb release to add a little revs is probably a good idea. That's how Austin does it for him today, but she's still got to control the pocket, and that's the difficult part of that no thumb release. David Haynes with that familiar little pre shot swing that he does. And even his ball doesn't want to hook if you get it that far right, so he leaves the one, two, four. Austin puts his thumb in it for the spare and still unable to cover it. David, a former amateur Team USA member, a New Mexico Open champ, quite the resume. Unfortunately, no bowling ball. <laughs> He, he, he can punch up another ball. He owns, owns a company. Eight million time champ Kyle King. What is it, 57 now? He know. is. It is a very scary sentence for the rest of the JBT. It's December and Kyle King is on fire. That is not what the rest of the tour wants to hear. He gets that 10 pin to go out. Really, really on fire. Just put it all together here after a pretty slow start to the season, really. Didn't have any titles until November. And he uh, won best in the West, won the California team, won the Arizona team, and here he is looking for the uh, Mojave Tough title. Let me build my storylines the way I want to build my storylines. Dirty. <laughs> Nathan, the younger brother of Ian, the dual no-thumb combo. 
Two finalists, no thumbs in the handicap division. <laughs> Look, Ma, no thumbs. So he almost rolls the two pin there. They qualified, well, they all have thumbs. They're just two of them are choosing not to use them at the moment. I want to clarify that, but they actually do come with thumbs on their body, but that's all right. They qualified first today at a whopping plus 13. And that shows you how difficult they were today. Is they were the only team plus just about all day long. A few other teams peaked over that plus line. They weren't able to stay there. They were plus 15 after one. That was good enough to lead, and they led every single round since then. And you see that ball not even think about hooking. Apparently there was a flood in Tokyo today. Oh yeah, I would know about that. Those lanes just will not hook. This is game, they bowled four games on the fresh, then a three game semifinal, and this is the fourth game of the stepladder. And uh, as you can see, they're still uh, soaking wet out they there. They barely broke down, and even then it was just a few ahead. See bowlers with less hands, like Marguerite and Shelby, have to pretty much point the ball at the pocket. 3-9 is about as ugly as it gets right now, because you're right on the out-of-bounds line. That's a tough one to shoot at. But then there was Zach and Kyle. Tori had a low game of 182, and that's really the difference today, is controlling your low games. If you can you know, bail out those potential 140s and turn them into 170s and 180s, that really, really helped your team out today. Of course, stringing doesn't help, doesn't hurt either. Zach had a high game of 246, while King's last game was his highest game, a big 266. So somehow they found a way to carry strikes today. They were the only two. Fortunately for them, they happen to be teammates. Only able to get the front pin out of that is Shelby. And both teams there have two out of three open, so they're essentially tied up. Zach, the uh, all-everything in Las Vegas youth bowling for quite a while. Junior Team USA member from his junior gold runner-up finish. That's why it gets 10 in the pit there. That's spare double for his team. Gets him out to a big early lead. We'll see what Chase can do about it. Watch that. High back swing and then that pop at the release. You can physically hear the pop. The trouble is when you have that high rev rate is there's so much oil you can't get it to the right. There's still a lot of oil to the left. The ball will just back up on you. So it leaves a really, really thin margin of where the ball is going to pick up any rotation at all. So then you start to get a situation where it grips a little bit in the front and then just skids the rest of the way. That's, that's tricky. Switches to the plastic, he'll go hard and straight at this four pin, I hope at least. Shouldn't try to do anything else. Well done. That's the idea. When the lanes are walled up, you can throw a big old hook ball at that off the strike line if you want. On sport shot or sport type shots like this, you want no car to doing that. It's a good lesson for you folks all over the world watching that. Straighter is greater on the spares. Right, Travis? Yes. Marguerite and Shelby qualified second today, won their semifinal match. Qualify again. Don't hear that very often. Qualified second today at minus 80. Won their semifinal match over Aaron Johnston and Priscilla Redd, a West Texas AMU team. They had won two matches previous to that, getting past the rookie team, father-daughter team of Brianna and John Singleton, and they beat a perump team of David Llewellyn and Zahn Bowder in round one. Devin's just got what she needed in the 10th frame. They needed 6-2 or something, and she went 5-3 or something like that to escape with the win. Austin just kind of even that down there and backs up right into the pocket and trips the four pin. See David get that little practice swing. That's to get all the tension out of his hands. As soon as it feels right, he goes right into that unique release, powerful release. There's 10 in the pit. Team still trails, and Kyle can make him trail by even more if he can make it three in a row here. Kyle just so smooth. There's no really spectacular part of his game. Just perfect timing. Extremely good knowledge of what to do with this game to try and match up. I think that's where he excels more than any other under 21 bowler around. That's why he's our all-time titles, all-time money, all-time many things leader. Nathan up quickly. Yeah, 
that devilish team goes after a big lead. Want to see who wins? Watch part two.